All right. So eyes up, if you're good. Pseudo code. I just want to outline a couple of things that are maybe fairly obvious, but I just want to make them really, really concrete. The first one is that keywords in pseudo code should be all capitals. Now this isn't a requirement, but it's a consistency you'll see across every single exam in the entirety of the course. So if the word begin, that's a built-in keyword. So you write all of that in capitals along with read and print. Okay, so they sort of indicate the functions or the commands of the programming language. Now, please, for the love of God, whenever you do like a begin and end, indent your lines of code inside that or your instructions. And if you do if statements, indent the lines of code as though you were writing in C sharp as well. Okay, the indents are really important because they tell you where the code belongs. If I see this code here, I know it belongs to something which is the if statement. And I can see the if statement's indented, so I know it belongs to something, which is the whole function. Okay, has anyone got any questions on that in particular? You all right? Yeah. You won't necessarily lose marks, but you, you, we're getting to the point where you have to write your answers to a marker. And these, is how, these are how you write your answers to a marker, because this is what they're used to seeing. Yeah, Dil? At the very least in the preliminary course, will we ever be expected to write pseudocode that's functions within functions kind of thing? Or? Not to that extent, no, but you will be expected to write pseudocode. Mm -hmm. That does function, if that works. All right, so our next step, the other type we talked about was flowcharts. Now, a lot of you said that you've seen them before, you've heard them before, and I'm going to quickly tell you the best way to draw them, get a pencil, start drawing. And I'll show you my little method of drawing them in a sec if you're using a pencil. The other one, if you want to do a digital version, which you're probably going to do mostly on your assessments, is draw.io. I've used this bad boy for about four or five years, and it's fantastic. Okay? The first great feature is it allows you to save all of your work onto Google Drive automatically, which means you have to do, obviously, log in. Da -da -da -da. Here we go. Now, what I might do, because I don't want to spend half an hour setting it up, I'm just going to hit device, create new diagram, and I'll leave it as a blank one. All right, it's pretty overwhelming to begin with, but if you look on the left-hand side, these are all your general icons, and the only ones we need in this course, we need the square, or the rectangle, I should say, the rounded rectangle, and then this little bad boy with the two lines on either side, and the diamond, okay? And this is why I love draw.io. If I need a rectangle, I'll drag it in. If I need to type into it, just with it selected, let's wait until my keyboard kicks in, I can just start typing what I want inside that rectangle. Let's do that. And let's say that that rectangle needs to flow on to the next one. I can click that blue. Is my mouse connected, is it? Yes, it is. I can click on this little blue arrow here, and that automatically spits out a copy of the box and connects them together using an arrow. So it shows you the flow of where you have to go from that one. Yeah, Dylan? Is there any way to change the shape of the thing it's spawning when you... Get the arrows. I 100% know what you mean. Do I know how to do that? No. So if you want to go from a square to a diamond, is that possible? Okay. I I think the answer right now is no, but let's have a quick look. Not by the looks of it. I think I have to edit the text on there. That's right. I'll have a look at it. But one thing you can do that I'm aware of, if I click on this box here, I can make it a rounded rectangle just by ticking that box there. Okay, and that's actually really important because at the top and the bottom of our flowcharts, we have rounded rectangles to indicate the start of it and the end of it. Now, what do they actually look like and how do they function? They're pretty straightforward. I'm going to give you the two same chunks of code that we had in the previous one. So there's add nums, but it's in flowchart form. So hands up if you like drawing things. I don't mind drawing things. I'm okay with it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's pretty good. That's almost half. I think I asked that question last year. I got one hand. So that, that's a massive step up from last year. So the basic idea is, if you like writing words and writing code, use pseudocode. If you prefer graphics and you prefer following like a nice line, use flowcharts, okay? The only problem I have with flowcharts personally is they take up a lot of space because you've got to do big shapes and big arrows, but that's not a major, a major issue. If you like it, use it by all means, okay? So this is the same function, add nums. Um, let's quickly... Go to pseudocode. I just want to quickly rehash you. If you have a look here, 
add numbers. We read num1, read num2, then we make total equal num1 plus num2, and then we print. Your numbers added are total. And the exact same thing in a flowchart form. Sorry about jumping around. So we start at the start, believe it or not. You then go on to read num1. Then we read num2. Then we make total equal num1 plus num2. Plus num and then we print your numbers added are total. End. Sound pretty good? All right, so you've seen two shapes there. There is a third and a fourth shape that we'll get to later on. But here's the other one. This is the string one where we get a string. Check the length of it. If it's less than six characters, it's short. If it's greater than that or anything else, it's long. So print, enter a sentence. Read the sentence. Now this is your if statement. So you even drop the if word. It just says sentence.length less than six. Now the reason we drop the if is because the diamond indicates the if. Is everyone okay with that idea? Mm -hmm. If I see a diamond shape, I know for a fact that you're asking a question. And I should see a branching path. I should see this. A path that says yes and a path that says no. You should always have two paths at least. Okay, so if the length of my sentence is less than six, then I follow the right-hand path across to that's a short sentence. And if you follow that line, it actually goes to the end. Now, if my sentence is six or more characters, it'll follow the no path and say, now that's a sentence. And again, end of the path. Okay, so does that look fairly natural to everybody? Has anyone got any questions just about the basics of that? The one thing I really want to quickly emphasize, do everybody notice how it's got a bit of a spine about it? Start and end in the exact same spot and it also travels down the middle. That's pretty much how you want to be drawing your flowcharts in exams. And if you have a diamond, branch off, but always come back as soon as you can. Sorry, Allah. Uh, is each different, uh, for like the while or different shapes? Nope. Are they all just... They're all diamonds. So we'll get to that. But if we were doing if statements, while loops, do loops, or for loops, you actually use the exact same shape, which is the diamond. But the way loops work is you basically say, do I want to loop? Yes. So your line goes back up there and you come back down. So you create a loop by literally making the line go back up and making a loop, like a physical loop in the actual thing. All right, here are your symbols, and this is probably what you need to draw today. We have the rounded rectangle, we call that a terminal, it's the start of the end, pretty straightforward. The rectangle is a statement, which is just like I'm just executing a little bit of code. There's our diamond, which is our if statement, right there. And finally, we have this guy here, which is a subroutine. So imagine I have, two algorithms and the first algorithm actually utilizes the second one okay so it executes the second algorithm and that's when I would use this I'd say I want to use another chunk of code which is over there okay it's like when you started programming and we did all those different voids okay that's when you'd use a subroutine okay we won't get to that guy probably until year 12 though but I'd like you to write him down because I only do this once in your whole course so for this one Give yourself an example and draw the symbols. And then we've got one more page and hopefully we'll get to it called basics that we're gonna have a look at. And Mr. OBS. Okay, everybody, can I just have your eyes up here for just one quick moment? Now, I said that there was one thing I wanted to show you when you're drawing with a pen. Now, this is gonna be the simplest piece of advice I can give anybody. And if you know how to draw, you probably already know the advice. But essentially, if I was drawing a flowchart, first thing I don't want you to ever do is draw the shape and then try and write inside of it because that's what happens. Okay, this is the silliest and the simplest piece of advice I can give you is write the words first and then encapsulate it in the shape that you want. Okay, so if I was checking that sentence, I could type sentence... Am I spelling it right? Sentence length less than six, and then I would draw a diamond to encapsulate that. Does that make sense, everybody? Because then you don't end up with those situations where you've written the words and you go, oh, crap, and you just start squeezing letters in, and then you it ends up being unreadable because you just can't read those letters at the end. So write the words, then draw the shape. Okay, my biggest piece of advice for you with flowcharts. Yes, hello?
Is the uh, purple one if you just the rectangle? No, I have to fix that. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's just a rectangle. I have to fix. I just kind of put my hands. Okay, boys and girls. Yes. On to the basics. Oh, most of you have had a look at it already, but what I want to do here is sort of integrate the idea of our real world algorithms that we've already had a quick go at with pseudocode and flowcharts. Okay? If you have a look, this is boiling a kettle. And in the pseudocode version and in the flowchart version, they are exactly the same, okay? So feel free to look at each one, but essentially these are the steps required in chronological order to achieve that process. So we need to fill the kettle with water, place it on the base, turn it on, wait until it's boiled and pour it into a cup or whatever you really want. And on the flowchart side, I've got the exact same thing. And Kavon sort of outlined before, I'm trying to emphasize how much room that flowcharts take up. I'm not. It's just how much room it took up by default. So I left it. Okay. If I scroll down, there's a have a go section. So this is what everyone is going to be doing for the rest of this period and next period. So, whoop, need to get rid of that because I keep forgetting. No, so this is what I want to quickly explain before everyone jumps into it. So it says, write an algorithm for the following problems using alternating pseudocode and flowcharts in your responses. Now this all has to be in your book, by the way. I don't want you to use draw.io for this. You can use draw.io in the future for your assessments. But for example, if you start the first one, let's say you do pseudocode for this one. Whoop, if I can spell it. Then the next one you have to do is a flow chart. Then the one after that has to be flow in pseudo, then flow, then pseudo. If you start on flow chart, then you have to go to pseudo for the second one. Okay? This is the only time I'm going to ask you to do this ever is to do both of them at the same time because in the future I'm going to get you to pick one that you preference and then use that for the rest of the course. Is everyone okay with that idea? So we've got five problems. You have to purchase two ice creams. I don't want you to really think about these problems by the way. Purchase two ice creams doesn't mean go get two ice creams, go pay for them. We have to ask certain questions along that. Okay, And the simplest question I would propose to you is do I have enough money for two ice creams? Don't know why I'm buying two ice creams if I don't have money. But I'm going to leave that one with you. Second one, submitting a class assessment. Number three, waiting to cross the road at traffic lights. Okay, you're walking by the way, you're not driving. If anyone wants that pointed out. Troubleshooting a broken keyboard. And then a number guessing game from where the player must guess a random value between 1 and 100. Okay, so I want to see an algorithm for each one of those. Start with either pseudocode and flowchart and swap for the next one. What I'd probably suggest is if you preference pseudocode, start with pseudocode because that means you'll have three pseudocode and two flowcharts. If you preference flowchart, start with flowchart. So you have three of those and two of pseudocode. You have to do them in the order? I said alternating, so yes. That's what alternating <laughs> means. <laughs> All right. Anyone got any questions on this activity? Allah. Uh, do you want us to upload <laughs> this one? No. We have an exercise for that later on.